I've got an itch I can't scratch. I'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me. An open wound scar to see. Everybody come here, gather round. Welcome to the freak show, the best in town. What the hell's wrong with me? I don't get along with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head constantly. Thoughts jumbled round. Think I need a new lobotomy. Wait. All these thoughts are too negative. I don't want to get lost in the sedative. Gotta show them what I got. I'm competitive. You know I'm about to go off. I won't let them win. I'll take a stab. I want to chase a bag. I want to way. I can change all the things I lack. I got to face the facts. I got a taste in that. Got me obsessed with the rest. I got an itch to scratch. Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical. And today we are going to start the third and final final unless you guys comment below and say that you want more of this series but for now i'm going to say the third and final chapter or episode of how to carry a knife and in today's episode we're going to discuss how to carry a knife if you are maybe a military type person or in a very cold environment or in a very extreme environment as far as, let's say, end of the world. You know, there's preppers out there that like to watch my videos sometimes and be prepared for, you know, mass unrest or political unrest, natural disasters when people, you know, start to get a little out of hand. Well, if you feel like you need a full size knife, then this is the best way to carry one. In video one, we discussed a general middle of the line, best way to EDC in the broadest array of environments. In video two, we discussed light clothing, athletic wear, gym clothing, the hardest clothing to carry a knife. We discussed how to do that. And then now we're discussing how to carry a knife really to where it's not even concealed because the resounding theme here in these videos is if a knife is easily concealable, then it may be not as effective, or if a knife is easily concealable or very well concealed, it may not be as easy to access. In this case, we're not really worrying about concealing the knife, although even this large plate carrier setup with the double tapper Bowie strapped to it, who I designed in conjunction with a friend of mine in a Israeli military who who is in a unit that I can't really share too much of in the Israeli military, but you guys may know him as Double Tapper. And me and him designed this knife together with some of his influences. And then we've got a couple more Bowie knives here. This particular Bowie knife is a standard Bowie design. Okay, this is the Bloody Bill. And then this is the Bush Ranger Bowie. Okay, so the three of these together are the Bone Tactical Bowie lineup, and these are kind of your best bet for giant knives, <laughs> okay? Really, if you want big, you can't get any better than this. We've got the serrations and saw back requested by Double Tapper, but what we're discussing here is carry methods. So, okay, we've got plate carrier, obviously, or chest rig, great. Zip ties, Strap to the chest rig, plate carrier, backpack, even the anywhere you have molly, anywhere you want to strap it, even in your vehicle, under a table somewhere, anything like that, cool. All right. The other end of the spectrum is you guys that might want to be a little bit more prepared for bushcraft, for getting out into the wilderness, maybe cold environments, somebody that might live in Alaska, somebody that might do a lot of hunting, outdoorsmen, big game hunting, or even being able to both be tactical and end of the world type scenario. So this is why I've developed the scout carry or behind the, well, this is behind the back bushcraft carry. Okay. Comes with the holders available here. This is the current in stock and shipping bone tactical fire starter and both different ferocium rod fire starters fit into here. Okay. Then the sheath itself in this particular case comes with a sharpening stone. All right. Okay, so before I get into the full details of this awesome sheath right here, I'm really quickly going to say about the plate carrier. If you guys are military guys setting up a plate carrier for the end of the world, whatever, definitely put a large fixed blade knife on there. Make it accessible to both hands, both hand accessible and easily accessible, not blocking other gear and without other gear in the way of you getting to your knife. All right, boom, that's it for that. This awesome sheath is really just what I would recommend, like I said, for people 
a you know Alaskan type hunter, deep wilderness. If you're planning on really going out into the woods, it's great because it's got a lot of the stuff that you want to carry with you. It's extremely comfortable, multi-use, can be worn this way or this way. And then I can reach behind my back and super fast. It's even tactical in the sense that that just reach behind my back and I'm pulling out immediately and super quickly a knife like this. And it's even concealable with a huge knife like this. So it's just a really a game changer as far as that goes. I'm gonna discuss right now a very popular bushcraft knife. This is the J Martini. Uh, it's the very popular Scandinavian grind. They have this stainless steel that these guys are using over there in Finland and it's you know popular, it's very sharp, but it's very sharp because the grind is very small. So this, this Bowie knife is shaving sharp and this Bowie knife is shaving sharp, but this Bowie knife can take a bullet and this Bowie knife will break if you try and do anything tactical with it. Well, it's not a Bowie knife, but this bushcraft knife. So I can do all kinds of bushcraft stuff with this and it's nearly unbreakable. And then I've got a knife like this that a lot of people like because it's stainless steel, but all you got to do is just take care of your knife. Okay, so just another thing. And since we're talking about carry, let me show you something here. When I'm carrying a well-made sheath like this one that has a double belt loop on it, and then further secured here, I can run, I could compete in the Olympics with this knife on and it's not gonna go anywhere. If I have this knife right here with this little sheath like this, this knife's gonna just be flapping all over the place. And it's nice that the knife fits very deeply into there because it's probably not gonna fall out because of that, but it's also not tactical in any way. So it's a, it's a cool bushcraft knife. I mean, I guess I would use it although it's definitely gonna chip and, and, and potentially break, but it's definitely better than nothing. And if I'm gonna be using it specifically for maybe fishing or hunting, it could be good not for killing, using in a survival situation, mounting on a pole and using as a spear or something like that, like this could, but it could be good for cleaning game if you're very careful with it and definitely fish and like a bird and trout type knife is what I would consider it. So that's kind of your options here. Definitely you got a lot of great options out there, but what I would recommend is something along these lines that you can have a bunch of different sheath options for. The old standby guys is just a belt knife, but don't turn down or don't uh, sleep on the ability of these three quarter on center eyelets. You can put a belt loop down here, you can put in, you know, inside the waistband if you really wanted to for some reason, but you can attach it to any kind of a plate carrier anywhere that there's anything that it needs to be attached to. Huge variety of options, or you can get really specified like this. But the idea, of course, guys, is to have a very ergonomic blade. What that means is you want to be able to get a good grip on it here. So it's a little bit narrower here with this grip texture here. You want the grip texture jimping on the spine rather than the handle scales here, so it's comfortable in the hand, okay? So you don't get blisters on your hand, but that you still have good grip. You want the pommel to be able to use for butt strikes or to be able to be pushed down like this on the pommel without, you don't want a sharp pommel. You want a swell in the back. You want a big enough grip to where it's comfortable. You wanna make sure it's not gonna leave out of your hand when you're using it. And you want a blade that stabs well and slashes well. That's the reason we have this swell in here. So it slashes well, and then it's narrow here, gets bigger here, and then goes down there. What it does is creates a gaping wound channel here, and then just comes right out with ease. So it stabs well and slashes well, well balanced. So much that goes into a knife, but at least now, guys, when it comes to big knives, it's pretty simple. You gotta strap it to something, you gotta put it on your belt, or that's about it. That's kind of the options. You could get into shoulder holsters and stuff like that. And really, that's another great advantage to having a holster like this because it's fully modular. So if you really wanted to wear a knife on a shoulder holster, as long as you get a good knife that has a good sheath that has attachment options like this, then it's not a true shoulder holster. It's just a, a knife that you're carrying on a shoulder holster. Basically, the strap, you have the shoulder holster and then you can attach any knife to it that you want to. So when it comes to big knives, I'm gonna finish out with this. You need to either strap it to something or wear it on your belt. Shoulder holster even counts as strapping it to something. 
that's kind of how it is. You're normally going to sacrifice concealment unless you have a shirt like an El Sicario shirt or something like that. But most people that are carrying a huge knife aren't really worried about concealment. That's uh, the end of this video. Again, if you guys want to see more videos about knives and about how to carry knives or anything about knives, let me know so I can keep these videos coming. Thanks for watching. Bone out.